Hello and welcome to my channel, the place where I take you on RV tours, campground tours, to hiking destinations, and so much more. Are you tired of running out of power in your RV while out on the road? Well, in this video, I'll show you how I installed a powerful 51.2 volt cloud energy server rack battery in my B-Class RV and how I am using it to supply power to my EcoFlow Delta Pro 3. This setup gives me massive reliable power wherever my adventure takes me. Click on the link above to see how I installed the EcoFlow Delta 3 into my RV. Also, check my video description for the parts used in this video and for additional discounts on the price. Now, why a server rack battery? Well, for me, it was because I just don't have space for a standard size 48 volt lithium battery. Server rack battery sizes are very different. The height is shorter than your standard battery, which gives you more options. Some server rack batteries can even be mounted to a wall. For example, the Cloud Energy server rack fits easily behind the driver's seat and comes with a wall mount kit. A standard format battery would not fit behind my driver's seat. So let's get started. First, let's discuss the battery. As I mentioned earlier, this is a Cloud Energy 51.2 volt 100 amp hour, which is advertised having 5,120 watt hours. It does have a monitor, a power button, and even a 100 amp breaker. It also has a very useful app that provides plenty of information. I did run a capacity test on this battery, and here's what I achieved. As you can see, it performed well above its advertised specifications. For this project, I will also be using a Vivor 48 volt battery charger, vibration isolators, 25 foot 20 amp extension cord, and a 15 foot XT60i to battery terminal cable. I also created a diagram of my idea. And here's what that looks like. As you can see, when the RV is connected to the 30 amp shore power, the EcoFlow will get charged as well as the server rack battery by way of the battery charger. The EcoFlow pulls about 15 amps when AC charging, and the Vivor battery charger pulls 10 amps for a total of 25 amps. This is well under the 30 amp supplying the RV at a campsite. Now take note that the EcoFlow does allow you to control how much AC power it uses. You can easily decrease the 15 amps down to 5 amps, for instances when you're plugging your RV into a 15 amp outlet, like I typically do while it's parked in my driveway. As the EcoFlow does allow for pass-through power, you do want to make sure you set the appropriate AC charging limits. For me, I set the AC charging limit to 500 watts when plugged into my 15 amp outlet at home and 1800 watts when plugged into a 30 amp outlet at a campground. Let's go ahead and mount the battery. Safety first, I made sure all power was off. Also, I made sure to wear safety glasses and safety gloves. I started off by attaching the wall mounting brackets to the battery and then attach the wall mount to the wall of the cabinet behind the driver's seat. Here you need to make sure the wall mount is securely attached to the wood frame. You may need to add reinforcement as the server rack battery is about 100 pounds. I purposely mounted mine so that the weight was mostly on the floor and the wall mount was more for securing it in place for moving around. I also left some space to place a couple vibration isolators underneath the battery. I'm using these to lessen any vibration and bumps to the battery while driving on rough roads. Here is what it looks like with the battery mounted in place. Now for the fun part, routing the wiring. For this, I need to remove the refrigerator, which is not difficult as it's only held in place by four screws. I was then able to fish the wires behind the bathroom via the cassette toilet opening, then under the rear driver's side seats, and finally back to the garage area. Next, to mount the battery charger, I needed to ensure I was securing it to the wood frame. In my case, I added some extra wood support to ensure the charger would be held in place securely. 
I then mounted the battery charger close to the battery. Now that all the wires have been run and the battery charger mounted securely in place, let's plug everything in, attach the wires, and see how it works. I am connecting the server rack battery into the high voltage solar port on the EcoFlow because I do have a solar panel connected to the low voltage solar input. However, the cloud energy battery could use either solar inputs or even both solar inputs if you wanted as the 51.2 volt battery is within the specified voltage range of both solar inputs. Now that everything is attached, you can see the EcoFlow is being charged by the AC port, the cloud energy, battery plus roof solar, and if I turn on the van, it will also be charged by the alternator charger I installed in a previous video. In total, I now have close to 10 kilowatt hours of power with multiple charging options. With all of this power, I should have no problem camping off grid for an extended period of time. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel as I have many more videos coming soon. Bye for now.